What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. I just got back from doing a run, I'm feeling energized and I wanted to share something fun with you guys today. We're gonna look at the time when a kickboxer annihilated a world champion boxer. Now, we have to keep in mind that we are going under kickboxing rules. That's a big difference. If we put this kickboxer against the boxer under the boxing rule set, probably wouldn't go the same, but it is interesting to see what happens to a boxer when you introduce the kicks. Now, the big thing we have to keep in mind here, there are many times where a boxer has got beaten down by a kickboxer, but it's very rare when a high level boxer makes the transition over to kickboxing. So we're gonna be talking today about Masato, who is one of the highest level kickboxers in the world, versus Vince Phillips. And I'm looking at Wikipedia right now. Vince Phillips had a total boxing record of 48 wins, 12 losses. Now, when we look at that and we hear it overall, nowadays with the boxing and the records that the guys have, they hardly ever lose, that doesn't sound super fantastic. So what we have to look at is who did he fight? And one of the big names when I was looking that he defeated was Mickey Ward. He KO'd Mickey Ward, who everybody here should know, in the third round, and he won the IBF light welterweight title. So that, that in itself just shows you this guy is pretty legit. Throughout the later stages of his career, kind of from 1998 up until 2007, he was kind of win-loss, win-loss, win-loss. But before that, very stellar record. When he fought Masato, I believe it was in 2003. So he was in the stages of his, right when he fought... Ricky Hatton, he fought Ricky Hatton in 2003 as well. So it must've just been a fight over in Japan. They lured him over probably with some good money and he fought Masato. So let's look exactly what happened in this fight and just have some fun watching it together. So here we go. That is Vince Phillips. He's still rocking his boxing shorts. Masato, the amazing kickboxer who just did so well throughout the years in Japan. The first thing we're noting here is Masato is not wanting to stand and punch. He is moving and moving and moving. And that is something which is very, very important because if he decides to stand and engage with Vince Phillips, we're gonna see him probably get clipped more than he needs to. Doesn't mean he's gonna lose, but more than he needs to. So he's moving, he's throwing those kicks and making sure he's just staying at range. A little groin shot, but let's get back into it as they just give Masato a warning for watching those inside lows. All right, here we go, back into the fight. Again, back pedaling. Masato switching to southpaw so he can fire off that big round kick, going down to the leg maintaining range, Vince Phillips trying to close the distance. But here's the thing, when somebody is constantly backing up and you're having to chase after them, it's very hard to get that good power on your punches because even if you land and they're backpedaling, it's so much easier for their body to absorb the impact as opposed to having the feet stationary getting hit, the body's planted and then the head just snaps back. So I don't know if that's the idea that Masato had, but overall it takes all the steam off Vince Phillips punches. And it's a very good thing to note if you're ever fighting somebody who has heavy shots and you have the advantage in kicks is to use that distance and back up. Don't let them have a point where your feet get planted. Back into the fight. Masato pumping. Pumping that jab, firing. I like how he's switching his stance. Just going after those arms from the southpaw, the big kick. There, Vince Phillips landed a little cross, but again, nothing of note. Masato actually has one of the toughest heads I've ever seen, so. Oh, that was very nice. So he's firing the round kick, he's firing the round kick. Vince Phillips starts reaching a little low, so Masato comes with a round kick and into that cross punch. Very slick move to utilize. We're going Again here, the low kick slams in. Then he goes up high, just staying mobile, not wanting to square off whatsoever with Phillips. Oh, kick comes up to the head, almost lands. 
Masato now shifting Vince Phillips with the power of those low kicks. And Vince Phillips does not know how to take them. In addition, let's pause and talk about his foot positioning. So generally, if I'm facing towards you, I have both feet facing this direction. But boxers very often will shift their front foot because it closes off their torso, makes it harder to land body shots, but that exposes you to the low kick and makes it very difficult when you take the low kick to have a counter punch because your whole body's gonna get shifted out of position. Even when Vince Phillips gets Masato cornered, Masato's off those ring ropes so fast. Again, the low kick coming, that one was close. A head kick could have been end of the game. I just like this fight because I like to see different styles face each other. Again, anybody who's fighting the guy outside of their style is at the disadvantage. Masato with a massive, massive advantage here just because it's kickboxing and he's the kickboxer. But I still like how he's showing that a boxer can be beat because very often people think boxing is the strongest fight sport. In all fairness to Vince Phillip is not in the prime of his career. Masato is. Another big low kick. And he just doesn't have an answer at this point. And once those legs go, he's going to have a lot of trouble mustering any massive power behind them. Oh, yeah, again, shifted. And again, Masato is not wanting to stand in exchange. He's just going to be smart and utilize those legs. No setup even. He just goes straight into the kick. And that's something important to note that the setup is usually something which you need to do because most people will be ready for that check. But if you're fighting somebody who's strictly looking to box you, they have zero interest in checking kicks, then the setup is not so important. Back at it, he's chasing, but again, he can't catch him because Masato's always on that back pedal. Yeah, just no answer for those low kicks. And we can see that he's having a lot of trouble moving through his front leg. When he tries to step, he looks very heavy, very stiff legs. There's the end of round number one. Once that leg's locked up, that lead leg is getting heavy, it's getting straight, he's not able to bend. How do you get a lot of power with like a stiff peg leg? It's very difficult. So attack the lead leg, great example of what you should do. Look at him move back to his corner. He can hardly make the walk. And let's skip ahead to the second round. Let's see here. All right, round number two. Masato not looking injured whatsoever. One low kick and he's already down. Why did he go down so quickly after getting kicked so many times in the first round, the second round just boom? It's probably because he took a seat and the body just gives out, and that's all it took. I actually wanna look back in between the rounds, let's see here, see what Vince Phillips does. He takes a seat, he does. So when your leg is heavy and stiff, probably one of the few things, well, not one of the few things, but one of the things you don't wanna do is sit down, because once you get back up, with that break in between, it's gonna be very hard for your body to recover, so I would say standing would be the ideal thing in between rounds if you know your leg is already shot. So there you have it guys, this is the time when a kickboxer absolutely destroyed a high level boxer strictly by using his legs. We didn't see Masato implement any hands there and it just goes to show you that adding that extra element, that extra weapon makes things so dangerous against the boxers. So there are other K1 fights where you can see High level kickboxers annihilate guys who have transitioned out of boxing. Generally, they're not going to be super high level guys who are in the prime of their career, but still interesting to see. You can, you know, search Raymond Bonjanski, uh, Peter Arts. They d definitely took out some high level boxers. Uh, that's it. That's all for me, guys. I'm going to go do my ab workout. Just a little break in between because I got motivated to share something with you. So if you enjoyed the episode, please give it a like. If you have not already, join the channel, get subscribed. As always, train hard, and I will see you back here soon for another video.